I just want to have a church family chat this morning. Is that okay? We have a great church family. We really do. And I know that there are many members of our church family joining us online this morning on Facebook and Zoom. And I thank, um, I thank the Lord for each one of them as well. I know some can't come out. Um, but you know, since April, it's almost a year, Phil, Pastor Phil has been preaching um, about several things, but mainly about changing the atmosphere, walking, living, and seeing in the Spirit, and producing the fruit of the Spirit. Amen. Um, our small groups have completed the consecration series uh, and are currently halfway through the Awe of God series. And there's a reason for that. Could somebody just grab my water? It's up there. Oh, my Brody. <laughs> um, our leaders, just not that long ago in November, thank you, uh, were introduced to the concept of becoming sons and daughters of Father God. Amen. And leading from... Is it popping, Gord? All right. Our leaders have been introduced to the concept of being coming sons and daughters in their leadership roles. And through um, that was through Robert Norcross's book, Trust One More Time. And I forget how many of us that were here that weekend, but it was a wonderful week, uh, a wonderful time really with the Lord. And I believe all of these things have led us uh, to where we are today and where I believe we are headed tomorrow, what the Lord has been showing me in my times with him. In the Atmosphere uh, series, we learned about no spiritual hindrances, uh, where we were challenged not to let our circumstances dictate our mood. Amen. We, were, we actually joked about having a garbage bag out on the front step. Don't bring your junk in here. Amen. Come on in here, ready, willing, and able to worship the Lord. Amen. And I, and I think we've been doing a good job of that, just coming to worship God together. We worship him at home, but coming together is a special thing. Um, and I'm just going to, I may or may not read the scriptures, but if, if you can put them up, Tammy, just for time's sake. But um, he introduced this topic, Second Chronicles 5.13, and you can read that. Um, but essentially, um, it says as part of that scripture, then the temple of the Lord was filled with the cloud. Amen. And the priests could not perform their service because the cloud, uh, because of the cloud, for the glory of the Lord filled the temple of God. And listen, we've been experiencing his presence here, but it's, we ain't seen nothing yet, folks. We ain't seen nothing yet. Um, isn't that what we want to come to church for, is to meet with him, to be in his presence, to have his glory fall upon us, to be healed in the name of Jesus, it's set free. Amen. We talked about, uh, we sang about some of those things here today. Um, we have been experiencing uh, his presence. We've been hearing from the Lord um, more and more. And, um, and I just thank all of you who have taken to heart Pastor Phil's message about leaving our stuff out there. We can pick it up if we want on the way out. Hopefully we don't want to. Uh, we also learned about no business as usual services, coming together with excitement and believing for great things to happen. And I believe we do that. Uh, there's always room for improvement, but, you know, I think for the most part, that's what we come for. And Matthew 18 and 20, there, there's that scripture we know so well, where two or three are gathered. Amen. Then Pastor Phil spoke about the atmosphere of the supernatural, where the Lord responds to our faith. And God will respond to those who believe. And I believe we have a group of uh, faith warriors here at Gateway. He spoke about no limitations allowed to be placed on anyone. Don't we uh, find ourselves sometimes placing limitations, even on ourselves? But he stated that there is no limit to what God can do with a life that is committed to him. He is no respecter of persons, and what he will do for you and me, he will do for anyone, those people that Kathy spoke about and that Kim spoke about. He will do that for anyone. Amen? Um, we need to keep our focus on God 
and not on what others are doing. Be careful that we do not find ourselves in the place of what I would call unbiblical judgment. Amen. It's okay as believers to judge one another according to the word of God. But sometimes we get in that place of unbiblical judgment. And we cannot have any of that. Amen. Not even an ounce of that. Um, he talked about an atmosphere where people are important. Jesus shed his blood for all. And our church is an open door for all to enter. It's not a private club. Amen. We need to treat everyone who enters our doors as though they are the most important person in the whole world. Because to Jesus, they are. No defeat of spirit was another one. God is able to deliver at any time. And I'll just put up uh, Psalm 72 and 12. It says, for he will deliver the needy who cry out, the afflicted who have no one to help. But we know who can help. Amen. It's like Kim said, we need to introduce people to Jesus. And uh, you can put up Psalm 91, but I'm not going to read through that. We need an atmosphere that projects that victorious living. Amen. That that victorious living or that victorious life is available for everyone, those who have no hope. Amen. A no hold the fort philosophy. We need to reach our community. We cannot keep this great gift of salvation to ourselves. It has to be shared. Amen. And Mark 16 and 15, it says, uh, go into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. A wonderful gospel message that we received here last week, Darlene. Just a brilliant, brilliant message. And I thank you for uh, being obedient to the Lord uh, for that. An atmosphere of financial blessing. Remember we talked about the tithes and offerings? Uh-oh. <laughs> One of those topics that we should never speak about, and yet we must, because it's part of being obedient. And we just have a, a wonderful family here um, with tithes and offerings and so on. Um, you know what? The church needs resources to do what it's been called to do. And we just thank you. And you'll be blessed as well. Uh, we need an atmosphere where the voice of God can be heard. Amen. And I believe there's a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit coming. <laughs> it's here. Uh, we need to hear his voice. And we've been hearing his voice. And that's why we're going to open play, a place after a worship for God moments. What's God showing you through that? No pessimism about the future. God is in control. We have to believe that. Amen. And we have to have an atmosphere of faith. And Proverbs 3, 5 to 6, Tammy can put that up. But we're not to um, lean on our own understanding. Amen. An atmosphere of vision. Uh, this is an atmosphere where people can see the invisible, do the impossible. Uh, what does Jesus see when he sees the church? He sees people that he has empowered. He's given us power and authority. Amen. That's what Jesus is, sees. And we need to accept that that is what we've received. Amen. And John 14 and 12, it says, Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes in me, will do the works that I have been doing. And they will do even greater things than these because I am going to the Father. We have to believe that. An atmosphere of worship. We certainly are. We're called Gateway Worship Center. But it's not all about the music, is it? It's about how we worship from our hearts. Um, and God inhabits the worship, the praises of his people. Um, Psalm 104 says, enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise and give thanks to him and praise his name. Amen. When we enter the sanctuary, we should feel a sense of reverence and awe and power and love and an urgency to praise him for all of these things. Amen. We went through our consecration series, and I know some of you missed out on that, but what a wonderful series it was. And it really um, established a foundation uh, where we talked about being the bride to the bridegroom. Amen. Um, we were asked a number of questions throughout that series that really uh, challenged us, I believe. Things like, um, what does simple devotion to Jesus look like in our lives? Who is Jesus to you? Are you ready to deny yourself the legitimate pleasures of this life 
so that you can experience a greater measure of satisfaction in God. What is the spiritual condition of your life right now? How can you clear your calendar? That's a good one. In order to go deeper into a relationship with him. <clears throat> Are your lifestyle choices reflecting Jesus? That's very important. Are you ready for an overwhelming conviction of sin in order to see revival at Gateway and beyond? That's another good question. Amen. We're hoping while we're away, revival breaks out. And when we come in, we're going to get in the lineup. Amen. But these were some of the tough questions that uh, we answered during that series. And it was a great series. Um, and I believe the, you know, the theme remains the same for today. Do you have an intimate relationship with Jesus? If you don't, let us help you. Uh, get started on that journey we really need I firmly believe we need to stop looking at our circumstances we look at our circumstances before we look at Jesus we have to look at Jesus in the circumstance and thank him for whatever it is we're going to be learning amen uh, currently we're in the awe of God series and um, that probably for another maybe even two months, it's so good, we're, we're extending it because we're receiving so much. But the bottom line is this, this is the message so far, that if we have the fear of man, we do not have the fear of God. Amen? We cannot fear man. We cannot succumb to pressures and need, listen, the pastors, we deal with this all the time. Why aren't you doing it that way? It should be done this way. Why haven't you thought of that? And so on and so forth. Because we're following the Lord what he's telling us to do. Amen. Amen. And so if we have the fear of man, we do not have the fear of the Lord. Robert Norcross, his series uh, for the leaders, um, really talked, oh, there's so much in his stuff, and we will be sharing that as we go through, but mainly for me, um, the takeaways was, am I, are you, making people feel tall or small? And you're going to be hearing that term. Um, I've actually made up some cards that talks about these types of things that we're going to laminate. Thank you, Nikki. And uh, James has created a little card for me. Am I producing the fruit of the Spirit? If we have a relationship with the Lord, we will naturally produce the fruit of the Spirit. So when we're not, we need to ask, why not? What is it? Amen. Um, and what is stopping me or what is stopping you from reaching that promised land? What, what's in the way of us living that promised life 24-7? Um, am I a son or a daughter of Father God? And that was a question that I had to answer for myself in the series. And it's changed my life. What does my devotional time look like? And the other big thing for me as well was... We really need to come away from any religious spirit that we might have. Amen? we got to come away from that. Because religion points. Amen? Look at. Look at. What does relationship do? It pulls. We don't want to point at our community and say, look what all's happened out there. Look what you're doing. Come on in and meet Jesus Christ. Amen? So that is something that we're going to be working on as well. And then we've just recently gone through In the Spirit series. And um, it's just been a wonderful series. And I don't think Pastor Phil gives himself enough credit. He's been hearing directly from the throne room. And as we, um, you know, look at other churches and so on, um, he's preaching the same thing as others are. The Lord is speaking to the leaders. Amen. Those with ears to hear. And I honor you to, uh, this morning, Pastor Phil, because you, I know what you go through at home. And I know when the Lord, he starts on a Sunday evening asking. And then he's researching and researching and confirming and confirming. And um, you have no idea the impact that you all have because you'll bring something that the Lord's been talked to about and it'll be right in his message. And it's a confirmation for that. 
And of course, the other thing that we're right in the midst of, and I know I've got a couple of board members here with me, we're in the midst of a transition from uh, the Apostolic Church in Canada, administrative, and um, we've taken all that on ourselves. We've become incorporated. We have a board of directors, which is a whole new beast for us. And um, uh, I would honor John if he were here, but I'm going to honor him even though he's not here. He's uh, really done a huge amount of work, uh, both he and I to get things in place because suddenly we're an employer of Pastor Phil, not the ACC. You have no idea what that means. <laughs> it, is, it is crazy and uh, those types of things. So we are slowly putting that into place and hopefully sometime toward uh, the beginning or end of summer we'll have an update for you. And I know the treasurer, uh, John, will be sharing with you about the finances and so on. So my question is, um, are you ready to dive off a diving board? When I was preparing this, and I know you can see that Gord's put that there, the 10 meter diving board. Um, yeah, um, I firmly believe that over the past year, the Lord has been speaking to us through all of these messages. Um, he's preparing us uh, for what is to come. And, you know, we've had many words over the years, let's face it, um, but certainly recently where the Lord is saying, you haven't seen anything yet. We heard that last week, I believe. And there is a great outpouring of his spirit just waiting for us to position ourselves to receive it. Um, and the word last week, stop running. Amen. Stop running. Let's just sit and rest in him. Amen. And you know that I've been spending time with the Father and Jesus, and they've downloaded so much I couldn't share it all in uh, probably even in a day. But I'm going to share uh, what he's given me permission to share. Um, get ready to dive. As I was preparing this message, the Lord showed me that we've been bouncing on a diving board, you know, the low one. We've been kind of getting ready, getting ready, getting ready, getting ready. Have we heard that for years? We're getting ready, getting ready, jumping, 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 almost prepared to, to dive, but no, 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 we're not quite ready yet, Lord, right? We're not quite ready yet. We'll just keep bouncing here for a while. Feels pretty good. Um, and this could be true for some of us personally, but certainly for us as a church, um, as, you know, as a collective group of believers. Um, and as we've been in preparation, the diving board gets higher. And I thank God, <laughs> I thank God for that visual. Um, and we have to simply trust that there's going to be water in the pool when we dive off. <laughs> Amen. That's where our faith and our trust has got to come in. Is there water in that pool down there? Because we can't see that. And he's really been talking to me about the need for us to trust. You know, he gave me a vision. The Lord gave me a vision. Um, and it, in the vision, we, meaning gateway, we were caught in a traffic jam. You know, where all the cars are going in the same direction and the traffic has stopped. But, and he said to me, I'm forging a new road. This is for us, folks. We're to come out of that traffic jam. Amen. He said, these people, referring to the people in the traffic jam, are blindly following the person or persons in front of them. All appearing to go to the same place day after day. He seemed quite sad about that. Then he said that we, meaning us, amen, would be breaking or are breaking away from the pack and forging a new road ahead. Um, he showed us on bicycles leaving this traffic jam and the well-worn road for a road not yet traveled. And those who were with us formed a V um, where the front person led with the vision of where we were headed and others followed behind. Amen. We know our leader is Jesus. Then he showed me shields one over top of the other in front of us, um, held above our heads, and we were advancing as a new army in his kingdom, in unity for one purpose, and we were tilling new ground. And as we traveled, the road was literally being built before us. We've not yet traveled this way. Amen. And the father asked, are you willing to take this new pathway? Not many have been on it. And I said, well, yes. <laughs> knowing that we will need to rely completely on him as we journey together. And he said, no more training wheels, folks. If we haven't got it by now, wow. With all that we've been provided, 
we have to prepare ourselves as well for a great harvest. Uh, the Lord has shown me that there is new apostolic seed being sown by the Holy Spirit as we speak. And he asked if we would be ready to receive a great harvest. I believe we're ready. There's also a new way of worship on the horizon. Uh, the Lord showed me hundreds of people worshiping. That's all I saw before a stage or a platform like we have here. Arms, voices raised uh, in complete surrender. And there was a glow surrounding them, a glow of the Spirit. Amen. He then direct me, directed me to look at that platform. There were no musicians, nobody leading the worship. He said, worship is all about the heart. A heart surrendered to me can produce a holy sound that you call worship. You must come prepared to worship with your hearts open to the Spirit. He said, we are not to get caught up in who is leading worship this week. Amen. Well, how many times do we've got a schedule? We must prepare the worshipers, you guys. Amen. We have to prepare the worshipers to provide the holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. A whole new perspective. The worshipers responsible for the worship. What's that going to look like? We don't know, but we're ready to step into that. Perhaps this is the place where the promised outpouring of the Spirit will come. Amen? Where we're not worried about, did we play the wrong note? Have we got the sound perfect? Or are we following along with the words? You know? Yeah. Just surrendered in worship. And so we will be establishing those places where we can do that. Um, he has said to me that the Spirit will come to places and people who have been parched, who have been in the wilderness, wondering when a move is coming. We've been wondering that, have we not been for a while? When's it coming? We feel like it's coming. We're ready to jump in. But then it's not there. Um, and it's a move that's been promised not just to us, but to other places. Remember the word about the fire starters, and we're, we are part of that. Um, yeah, it's going to happen all around. And it, when it comes, it'll come quickly. Um, and we have to prepare our people for that outpouring, because it won't be like what we've experienced before. And another big theme, and this, this also gets to what Kathy and... and um, Kim were saying that this is really heavy on his heart and um, and I don't know what it looks like yet but he said um, he's been talking to me about what he calls embers of hope and I know I've mentioned that before but we are called to minister and fan into flame embers of hope so who are those embers of hope well prodigal sons and daughters that's a start. Um, those who have many wounds, you know, the Lord said, I bring you many wounded and you will lead them to me. And the, those people who are living in addiction are wounded and our door is open. Amen. Um, those who believe but have never experienced God's love and relationship. We have people sitting in churches who've never had a relationship with the Lord. Amen. It also includes those who have stopped growing spiritually. And he says, from the ashes come new growth. It also involves those who have lost hope in today's world. The other thing, too, is I'm getting, I am getting near the end. Spiritual warfare, warfare is going to be a part um, of our landscape as we move forward, but not yet. Uh, the Lord is preparing his armies. He's shown me this for strategic battles. Um, and he will call upon us when he is ready. We will have a, a role to play. So if you've been called to spiritual warfare, it's time to get prepared. Amen. We are entering a time of discipling and multiplication. And uh, you will hear of two leadership cell groups that we have uh, put into place. And when we get back the first week of April, we're getting that started. And uh, we, we, our leaders will be discipled um, and will be able to then disciple others in being sons and daughters. 
Amen. And uh, this will impact their ministries, their lives, our lives as well. Um, but you know what? This is also a place where our leaders will be held more accountable. And that's, um, we need to be doing that in producing the fruit of the Spirit. So these are just some of the things that the Lord's been showing me, been showing me a lot. Um, but uh, these are the things that he's asked me to share today. Um, but you know what? This is too much for one person. This takes an army. This takes a church family. And um, with our hearts set on Jesus, Father God, we can't lose. We really can't. And the Lord says that all power and authority is ours. But we have to walk in obedience to him and his word. That's the key. On our prayer walk this week, um, you know, when we're praying, I'll tell you, we've got some dark places in this town. And we talk about the mountains, you know, the, the, if we pray, the Lord will move the mountain. And uh, as we were praying that, the Lord gave me a vision. And for me, it was a different perspective. Maybe you've had this perspective all along. But um, this is what he showed me. We have his power and his authority. When we're walking those streets, wherever we are. But we have to look at that mountain through different eyes. Let's look at the mountain from the top, which represents us standing in our authority instead of from the bottom, where all we see is this huge climb ahead. Amen. We are already on top of that mountain because we have the power and authority. Amen. It's not too difficult. Are you ready to dive? <laughs> Even if you don't see the pool of water beneath, are you ready to trust the Lord? to have faith in what he is calling us to do collectively and individually. We had a message about the gifts this morning. Get ready to use those gifts even more. There is so much more to share. And um, obviously we're going on vacation, but um, when we return, we will flush out some of these things in our messages. Um, what we would ask you to do in, as we're away, pray about this. This message is posted on Facebook. Um, it's posted on um, YouTube, our YouTube channel, and if you're really, really interested, Gord can send it to you in an email, and you can just watch it at your leisure. Um, I want you to listen to what the Lord, don't worry about the first part, but worry about what the Lord's been saying. Where do I fit? Ask the Lord, where do I fit? And uh, in his plan for Gateway and for beyond. So let us pray. Lord, we just thank you <laughs> that you speak to us today. Help us to position ourselves for the great outpouring of your spirit. Help us to set an atmosphere where you are welcomed in and where you can do whatever you want to do with and for us. Help us to fan into flame those embers of hope, including our own embers. We honor you today. We say we love you, and we choose to stop running from your goodness and your love today. Catch us, Lord. Help us to rest in your presence. Remove anything in us that is not holy so that we can receive all that you have for us in our lives. And we declare that we are standing on top of the mountain and our view is quite spectacular. And we are ready to dive in full of faith that the pool below is filled with heavenly water. In your name we pray this morning. Thank you, everybody.